Hello, I'm Steve Jackson from Imprintables Warehouse, and I'm here to thank you for taking a minute out for this week's training timeout. In this week's training timeout, we're going to take a look at how to work with CAD cut heat transfer films. In the first example I'm going to show you today, we're using Imprintables Warehouse Ecofilm. It's very easy to work with, easy to cut, weed, and apply. We're going to show you how to take a design off of your computer, load the media into the cutter, cut the media, weed it, then heat transfer it onto the garment. In the first example, I'm going to show you how to do this with a white ecofilm onto a black t-shirt. Then we're going to take the design and we're going to change a couple things up in it by simply changing the medias that we cut and using some of our bling type medias to really jazz up the design. Show you how to take a simple, very effective design and now make it into something totally unique that your customers are absolutely going to love. Let's take a look at the first step in the process, the design process. So here we have the design that we're going to work with. Uh, it's a pretty simple black and white design. We've got this nice koi fish and the word koi in there. It could be for maybe a, a Japanese hibachi restaurant or something like that. So very effective, nice graphic, good contrast on the black and white. We've got the design right here. I can use my Cut Studio plugin. It depends on what type of cutter you folks are using out there. I'm using a Roland GX24, so I'm going to use the Cut Studio plugin that they supply for Corel. So I can have my design right here and then just simply click on that button right there and it'll open up Cut Studio for me. Let me drag that over. It's on the other monitor right now. So drag over Cut Studio and make it larger for you. And you can see there's my entire design. I can delete the uh, box that was, oh, and I can see that's integrated with something else, so I'll right click and break the polyline, delete my box that was surrounding everything, zoom in a little bit, and I can see my entire design here, very nice, very effective. Um, I would want to mirror this before I'm cutting it, because on cat cut films for heat transfer, uh, we cut from the back side of the film uh, into the mylar carrier. So on this, I would want to mirror the entire design. And again, this depends on what cutting software you're using and what cutting, cutting device you're using. So on this one, I would go to Object and Mirror. And then I could communicate with the cutter, get the size and everything. But you guys can see the idea here, if you've already done some CAD cutting, that working with CAD cut heat transfer films really is not any different in your software. The only major thing you need to remember is to mirror it because you're going to be cutting from the back side rather than the top side like you would with any of your decal vinyls or anything like that. So this one here would be ready to go over to the cutter and we could load up our film and cut it. So let's take a look at that right now. Here we've got the Roland GX24 doing the cutting of the white ecofilm. You can see the film loaded up in there and we're doing cutting. And I'm going to speed up the video here a little bit, and we don't need to sit here and watch the whole thing cut. Uh, but gets you the idea, it's just cutting from the back side, the adhesive side, and then we'll take it over for weeding, and then we'll apply it to the shirt. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weeding. Here we've got the media all set up, and we're about to start weeding. I'm taking the, the weeding pick or tool or device or whatever you have there. Uh, I've got some dental picks and I've also got a weeder that I use uh, that I got from Printables Warehouse. And I just get it started in a corner there and Ecofilm's really stretchy. It's good to work with on this. I can just simply pull it off of the backing. Now that backing is very tacky. It's meant to keep everything in place. So we're pulling it off there and I'll work my way through the design and I'm going to speed up part of the video here so you can kind of see it in a little bit faster fashion. Here I'm going through the whole process, working from the outside edges of the design in. I, I like doing it that way so you can see exactly where you're at. Uh, white Ecofilm is very easy to work with, as all the Ecofilms are. It's very stretchable. I can pull it all through there and everything. And I made my design very easy to work with. I, I kept in mind that I don't want to have to pick out a whole lot of areas. So when I get into the scales on the design, you'll see that it's kind of a continuous flow all the way through it. And here's that area I was just talking about right there, starting into the scales. So fairly easy to work with. Keep that in mind when you're doing your designs. And we're almost done with it here. Once the design is done, we'll take it on over to the heat press and do the application. So here we have almost a finished design and right here. 
Now we're over at the heat press. This is a Hotronics air swinger I'm going to be working with here. And I'm going to put the shirt up on the heat press and kind of get an idea of where I want the design on it. One of the great things about Ecofilm is it does have a good tacky carrier to it. And that allows me to kind of stick it onto the shirt if I want to. I could even lift this shirt up and hold it up and get an idea of where it's at on there and it's not going to come off. And you saw me bend it around the edge there. This design is an oversized design and part of it is to kind of curl around to the front of the shirt so you can see that fishtail kind of curling around to it. You can see that I placed the shirt onto the platen. This has a throatable platen which means that I can put the whole shirt around it. Uh, the Hotronics Air Swinger and the Fusion from Hotronics are both throatable like that so I can stick the garment around. I don't need to worry about any seams or anything like that. Um, you could still do this with any other heat press, one of the clams or anything like that and have it just go onto there but you need to be careful of any seams or anything. Here I am setting the shirt up to have it wrap around there and we'll, once I'm satisfied with the placement of it and everything I'm going to hit it once with the heat press here so that I can tack it into place and then I'll move the garment over and get the second portion of it. And I, I moved it back a little bit there because I wasn't happy with how, how close it was to the edge there. I wanted to make sure that I got good adhesion all the way across. So doing the initial hit out of there to allow it to adhere to the garment. And then once that's done, I'll move the garment over to be able to get the other edge that's wrapped around. So there's our first hit. And now I'll readjust this over. Sorry, I'm blocking the camera a little bit there. Not very good placement. And uh, putting it into position so that I can get that second portion of the shirt there. Again, if you didn't have one that had a throatable platen, you could simply just move the entire shirt over, uh, but be careful of your seams like I said before. And I'm double checking everything there, making sure it's where I want it to be. And I'll get it back onto the press. I just need to get that little portion there that was hanging around the side that wasn't able to hit by the whole 16 by 20. I'll get that one on there and then once we've completed the heat press there I'll start uh, removing my backing material or the mylar film there and we'll have the whole shirt done. So I took it off of there so I could flip it around a little easier to work with than it hanging down. And we'll place it back on there and peel this whole thing off and you'll be able to see a, a finished design. A really striking design with the black and white on there and it, I think it's a very effective design having the contrast like that. Uh, just as a side note, anyone who wants to download this design, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Stephen Jackson IW. And it, once you've subscribed, I will send you the download file. Now let's take a look at a way that we can jazz up this design like I was saying in the beginning of the video. How about we take this design and instead of having it just black and white, we'll separate some of the elements in there and we'll change it over to three different colors. So let's look at page two that I created here. And now I've got this gold in there. I'm going to use a metal alloy film, one of our alloy films from Imprintables. And then I've got this different color here for the waves. I'm going to use our opal foil, which has a really neat effect when it's heat pressed onto a black garment. Uh, it's an opal looking color, but when you press it onto the black garment, you get a totally different color because of the translucency of it and it'll come out just a very, very striking. So what I did with the design is I separated the three elements, three colors here, and then I created another page for each one of them. There's the opal for the waves kind of around the fish, the blue one for the accents on the fish and the word koi, and then gold down here for all the scales and everything. And each one of these I would simply send over to my cutter after loading up a different film. So we'll do a quick little look at each one of the films cutting and then we'll weed them out and apply them to the garment. Here we have the cutter cutting the opal film that's going to be the waves around the fish and that effect to it. It's a translucent film, cut same as the white eco film. You see it rolling up a little bit here? That's okay, just kind of hold it down, it'll be fine. And it's cutting in the same manner as the white eco film. A little heavier pressure for the foils though. And this is the gold bling film that's going to be our fish head and the scales. Again, it cuts the same as the white eco film or any other. And last but not least, our spectra alloy film, which is going to give us a nice effect in the eye and the koi lettering. So once all the cutting is done, then we're going to go on to weeding. Weeding of all, all these films is exactly the same as the eco film. 
Um, you're just going to use the pick to get it started. A lot of times with the alloy, since it's a very stretchy film, I like to kind of pick into the points on the design and pull away from there. But again, it's very simple and easy to work with, just like any of the others. Uh, and you're going to weed them on out and get it prepared for putting on the shirt. And let's look at the application. Now the application, you can see that I have them all kind of stacked here. And I did that on the table where I did all my weeding and everything. It lets me make sure that everything's aligned up where it needs to be. And then when I go take it over to the shirt, as you see here in the video, I can place it on the shirt and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. I've got that overlap on the side there and I'm, I'm happy with the results on it. Once I've got it set that way, I'm going to do one layer at a time because this is three different types of films. And it's important to keep in mind on this one that the last film that we're going to put on here, the metal alloy, is a much lower temperature than the other two. So I'm going to have to do the gold one first, which applies at 320, and then I'll be doing the opal one, the foil, and I can do those at relatively the same temperature, 320, 310 in there. But the alloy film, the last one that we're going to put on there, is applied at 280. So I'm going to have to let it cool down so that I can apply that one. So I'm doing my first press here, and it's all done. And this is a, a cold peel, so I'm going to take it off the press, and I just kind of shake them out a little bit, let it cool down some so that it just cools it enough so that I can remove the carrier film from it. And I'll, I'll throw it back up on the heat press here after shaking it out to cool it down. You can also get a eraser tool that will help remove it, anything to pull that heat away from there. So I'm testing it out a little bit. You always want to, after it's cooled, test it to see if it separates good. And it did separate well, so I can continue with the rest of my design, uh, removing the mask there. If it hadn't uh, adhered properly to the garment at that point, I could always throw it back on the heat press and hit it again and activate that adhesive in there. So I'm happy with the results right there. And now I'm going to go on to aligning my second portion of it, the waves. What you can see I'm doing here with the waves is I started out on this design of um, trying to line it up with just the waves, but I don't have a real good reference point because I need that blue in there. So I bring the blue portion over, the alloy film, and I'm going to put that one on top of the wave film there, the opal foil, so that I can line it up again looking through the carrier films and make sure that it's going to hit on the design where I want it to. So I'll align the blue with the opal, and once I've got those two aligned, now I can put that whole thing back onto the shirt and line up the waves where they need to be. Since the blue is on top, and that's the last one I want to apply because of the lower temperature, I can remove that film from the opal foil, and everything's aligned where it needs to be, and I can apply that on there. So I'm happy with the results on that one. It looks good. I'm checking the alignment on the eye. And also with this design, it's important to note that I made it with a lot of spacing around everything so that it's not really critical that everything is exactly aligned in there because there is spacing between it. Your end user, the, the, the customer that gets the shirt, is never going to realize that it was slightly off here to there on it. Uh, this is a, this is a high-end design with three specialty films on it, so we can charge a lot more for it. And it's almost going to be like an artist one-off design that we're selling. So you, you're given a little bit of artistic freedom with it. So I'm putting it back around the heat platen there, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere the opal foil to it. Now remember, this is the part that curves around the shirt, so I'm going to have to hit this one twice. I'm going to have to um, do the first one to have it adhere there and then slide it around the heat platen so that I can hit it the second time on there. So I'm done with my first portion there, and you can see right away the colors change. Like I was telling you guys before, that opal film, it looks almost like a, a whitish when you're cutting it, but as soon as you go onto a black garment, it almost turns this greenish color. It's really cool, and you can see the difference there between the green side and the opal side, the part that hasn't been applied to it. So I'm going to hit it again real quick for that, and once that's done, I'll be able to remove the carrier film from everything. So I'm pleased with the results. You can see the color change right there. Very cool effect on this. And we'll remove our carrier film. And then I've got to let the entire press cool down so that I can do the alloy film because that one's at 280 versus the 320 or 310 for it. Now we've let the heat press cool down and I've got the alloy film on there all aligned where I want it to be. And I'm going to do a simple heat press onto that there. 
And once it's done with the heat press, I'll be able to peel it back and we'll have a finished garment that's ready to hang on the rack or put in the box and get out to our customers. So it's almost done with the cycle here. And one thing to note about the alloy media that is at the lower temperature, if I do heat press it at a higher temperature, it tends to lose its sheen and its shine to it. So we want to make sure that is definitely the last one that we put onto the shirt so we get that real bright sheen to it. So we'll remove our carrier film and then I'll hold up the shirt for everybody so you can see the finished design. Again, very cool, very neat design. Three layers, a lot of sparkle, a lot of bling to this. Uh, this is not something that you're going to do at a low price point for somebody. This is going to be more of a artist kind of one-off custom design, uh, but you can get a really nice price for it and do some very cool things. So you saw how easy it was to work with the white ecofilm. We made a great t-shirt with white ecofilm on that black shirt that really made our customer happy. We are also able to take it very easily and by changing out the medias we're using for the bling and the alloy materials and just totally jazz up that t-shirt to something that our customers are guaranteed to go crazy over. I want to thank everybody for stopping by again this week for the training timeout and remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel here, Stephen Jackson IW, so that you can get all of the updates on every one of the training times out and every one of the other articles that we do. You can also see more articles and more information at the blog, thegarmentedge.com. As always, you can visit us at imprintables.com and subscribe to our imprintables.com YouTube channel. Thanks again for taking a minute out for this week's training timeout.